Hey guys, Austin Swaim here to give you my three favorite bets from week two of college football. A lot of lopsided matchups with some best teams in the country just kind of holding some tune-up games, but we still have three gems to choose from, and I like bets in each of them, and that starts in the morning game. The Alabama Crimson Tide heading to Austin to face the Texas Longhorns. Big time brands battling here in this one. I like over 64 and a half points because these could very well be the best two offenses in college football. Obviously, we know what Bryce Young, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, brings to the table for the Tide, but you may not have heard as much about the Texas supporting cast. It is excellent. Transfer Quinn Ewers coming in here to Texas. He has a litany of weapons, including a Heisman contender in B. John Robinson out of the backfield, as well as returning duo Xavier Worthy and Jordan Whittington out wide. This is absolutely one of the best college football offenses, too. We have really no doubts Alabama's going to be able to score on a rebuilding Texas defense. The question is, can Texas keep pace? I think so, because when you look here, Alabama last year, 28th in expected points added against the pass. So not the ironclad Nick Saban defense we're used to. They were leaky at times. Texas is absolutely a wonderful passing offense with lots of weapons. I think Alabama could push for 50 points here themselves, but Texas will keep pace enough. I like the Texas spread of 20 points if you can get that on FanDuel Sportsbook, but I love the over 64 and a half points. Just watch them rain in in that one. But as we move into the afternoon wave, we have a fun interconference showdown between Tennessee the Tennessee Vols heading to the Pitt Panthers. I like the home team, Pitt, here getting six and a half points. Keaton Slovis answered a lot of questions for me last week. How would he replace Kenny Pickett coming in? Pretty well. He had 309 yards and a touchdown and a win in that backyard brawl over West Virginia. Acclimated very well to that Pat Narduzzi offense. The good biggest thing for me, Pitt's defense was great last week. 5.4 yards per attempt for JT Daniels and a functional West Virginia passing offense. They will need every bit of that defense against Hendon Hooker and the high-flying volunteers. This is another high-scoring game here in Pittsburgh, but I like the Panthers to start hot. They played the Division I opponent. They already have that under their belt. Tennessee had more of a tune-up last week. So so I think what I think Pitt starts hot. Give me Tennessee to win late by close margins, but I will take the Panthers in the points. And more importantly, I'm seeing on FanDuel Sportsbook if I can get this line at that all-important seven-point touchdown if I can later this week. But in the nightcap, there's a bet that I love as well. It is USC traveling to Palo Alto to face the Stanford Cardinal. Give me the Trojans to cover nine and a half points here. I absolutely think this UFC offense is loaded. It is one of it is right there with Texas and Alabama, and just because they play out west, you may not know it yet. They have one of the best quarterbacks in college football in Caleb Williams. They added productive Oregon running back Travis Dye. They've also got Bolitnikoff winner Jordan Addison out wide. This is an all-star team, and the schedule, not that difficult. They put 66 points on Rice last weekend. The biggest thing is, I don't necessarily think Stanford is a much better defense than Rice. You look at Stanford, 90th in ESPN's SP+. SP Plus defensive projections this year not expecting a great defense out of the cardinal this offense will score on just about everybody and the biggest thing for usc their schedule is weak they need style points they will run it up i don't think tanner mckee and stanford keep pace give me usc minus a couple of scores they should cover the spread here in what will be a welcoming to the contention for the college football playoff